Ever since I was born, I've been linked to an entity. Hey. You know, sometimes adults imagine things, too. What's your name? Jody. Welcome back to the land of living, Jody. His name is Aiden, and he's always with me. What did you do to that boy? Susan, this is going to stop. Is that either crazy or dead? Please don't leave me here. You're a monster! Do you hear me? A monster! All right, Jason, before we start this review, I have a very serious question that we need to discuss. Well, I have a very serious answer, Jeff. Okay. Continue. What is a video game? Um, oh, dude, you're breaking my mind. Okay. It's like a thing. No, it's uh, a box plays no. it in this. And, no, and it I'm makes sorry. This you, wasn't, it makes you want to kill. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to expand your consciousness or anything. Uh, let, me, let me rephrase my question. How much interactivity does a game require in order to be called a video game? <laughs> That's the question that uh, Two Souls asks us, or Beyond yeah. Two Souls asks us. Uh, and I spent the entire time playing this wrestling with the answer. Like, do we need to, 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 to set in stone interactive fiction or interactive movie right, right. as a genre... Because does just walking around and interacting with things in a virtual world make it a video game? <laughs> if so... Then have um, I got the most dull video game you've you ever know, played? If, if so, like, uh, you know those virtual tours you can take of a house before you buy it? Yeah. Is that a video game? Exactly! <laughs> That's the question. Welcome to Rage Light. We're talking about Beyond Two Souls, obviously, here today. Um, so do you, you got a chance to play this a little bit with Grant. Yeah, a little bit. You want to yeah. give me? You want to give me? I mean, because what I'm going to tell you right now is that what you guys played is a cross section of the entire video game. Oh wow! Uh, like uh, what you played is not that different than the entire video game. You got Jody walking around doing stuff. You got Aiden choking people out or knocking shit off of your countertops or doing his poltergeist thing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um. Uh. Yeah. It. Uh, <sighs> You know, from what little uh, I played, I mean, what we played an hour of it or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a little bit of action, but a lot. It was a lot of cutscenes and a lot of quote unquote gameplay. Yeah. That didn't affect anything. It was just like, hey, make this guy go over here and look at this. Okay. What? what what's that for? Well, yeah. She's just told you about the story a little bit. Okay. Now make her go over here and look at this. See, but see, here's the problem that I had when I was thinking about like, do, can you really like we put up the the videos for that on the website, right? Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people are there. This isn't even a fucking video game. So it got me thinking: if Beyond Two Souls isn't a video game, is The Walking Dead a video game? <laughs> because you don't do that much more in The Walking Dead than you do in Beyond Two Souls. Yeah. And a lot of it's just heavy dialogue based. That's the argument I made when we so, reviewed Walking Dead. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, which which I still like Walking Dead, but really, it's uh, it's not much of a game. Well, yeah, and it, once again, it just comes back to what you think. You yeah, know, what level do you got to be able to shoot something for it to be a video <laughs> game? Because you do shoot yes. a few things, you choke some people out, you do a few things. Anyway, let's. I don't even know how to do the recap for the story for this because the game takes place over like thirty years. Yeah, and it bounces around a lot. And it yeah, it's completely it nonlinear. It just jumps all back and forth and back and forth, but. But line it all up, reverse thing like Memento or whatever. Uh, you basically have the story of Jody, and Jody is played by very much recognizable Ellen Page, the chick from Last of Us. Uh, <laughs> no, not the chick from The Last of Us. No, the chick from Judo. Mm. Hard Candy. Mm. Inception. You might want to look that one up. Pretty <laughs> sure she was in The Last of Us. <laughs> okay, now you are. You're trolling Ellen Page. <laughs> like, Jason Murphy is directly trolling Ellen Page. I mean, her name in The Last of Us was even Ellie. That's right. Hello. Yeah. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Um, and she is a young child that has some, some spooky supernatural... You know, has a fucking misnomer, though. She doesn't have any powers. Yeah. She's got a ghost friend. She's got a ghost friend. She's got a ghost friend. Aiden, the not terribly friendly ghost. Aiden, the, the butthole ghost, Yeah. Um, and so the game basically tracks her over the course of her life, which goes from, oh, my God, you're a child, and then there's crazy things are happening, and then we gave you to the government, and now they're going to research you, I guess, and now you're in, which 
this is not a really a big surprise, but now you're in the CIA and like I don't haven't we learned yet that if you take like volatile I mean didn't haven't there been a billion stories about when you try to create fucking paranormal super soldiers? That shit always goes wrong. Yep. Never it's, works. Haven't these guys played idea. fear? Like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, um I hope not because no. Because you don't like fear I'm, either. I'm about to, actually, I haven't played <laughs> fear enough. Played a little bit, and I was just like, yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, this game like it bounces back and forth everywhere from young child Jody to um, I guess that it ends. It kind of it's one of those games that starts at the beginning with her saying some cryptic shit and then to, you start flashing back yep, and you're flashing to sexy forward showering and, Jody. Yeah, it's not really even that <laughs> sexy. I, I don't know. Um, but this is for anybody. Okay, so we'll we'll do two of this. The gameplay in Beyond Two Souls. Have you played Heavy Rain? It's like that, except there's some points where you have a ghost dude that's rolling around um, that you can make d- knock shit off of tables um, and do other asshole things. Uh, for those that haven't played it, <laughs> basically hide your phone, shit uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's one point in the game where like there's a dude coming over, right? And uh, you know there might be some some business Whoa, going down. Really? And your ghost buddy is being the biggest cock blocking ghost in the world. What? Like he does that. You remember that thing in Poltergeist where all the chairs go on the table? Yeah. He totally does that. Like he saw Poltergeist, and now he's just <laughs> doing the shit from Poltergeist. Um, but for those who haven't ever played a, a Quantic Dream game, there is a lot of the the game. You walk around kind of like you would in a third person game. Like a third person game with the worst store or with the worst camera controls in the world. Yeah. Because you can never look at what you want to look at. Um, and then there's all these button prompts to do stuff. And some of them are are nice, like they'll have you shake the controller or do circular motions or stuff like that to kind of mimic what's going on on screen. But unlike Heavy Rain, they really dumbed it down in here. Like Heavy Rain, a lot of times would make you, when you had to do something difficult, would have you play in Finger Twister, where you had like three buttons held down and you were rotating a thing in a circle that kind of gave you this weird kind of synesthesia between you and the screen here they have incredibly simplified the whole schema to make it as friendly to new players as humanly possible okay which translates into more, we want more money uh, we want to be a bigger success i uh, to me it just translates into like once again you're reducing the amount of interactivity with the player <laughs> right um there's also there's okay so there's walking around and you're doing a bunch of shit you turn on the lights you fucking make a pizza get in the shower I, whatever um, but then there's other parts where there's action sequences in the game. And in those sequences, they have this this thing that Grant was completely unable to master. <laughs> he w- master? <laughs> he wasn't able to if, complete the basics of it. Sorry, Grant. Uh, where basically the, the game slows down and you have a split second to look at the direction that Jody is moving, her arms or her legs, and then press the right stick in that direction to finish the movement. Um, and that's kind of cool. Like, it... it it's basically a quick time event that doesn't throw a big button prompt on the screen. <laughs> right. um, so it's nice. It does it, it. It makes fights in the game feel a little bit more interactive than they would if they were just straight up quick time sequences. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Aiden, where you can you can hit the button and you basically pop out of Jody and this kind of floating around, way too touchy camera ghost vision that can only go a certain distance away from her and you can knock stuff over you can possess people which is honestly the best part of the entire game when you get yeah. to possess somebody especially when you make them shoot their friend and then shoot themselves that's the best part that's pretty rad um or you can darth vader choke them mm-hmm. to death what if what if it's a hot woman can you make them go take a shower while, no. while you've possessed them no i mean man that's the the whole thing is like a lot of interactive story games this game is all about the illusion of having choice. Mm-hmm. There are maybe about four pivotal choices that you can make in the game that will choose, uh, that will give you different... This is such a conditional statement to avoid spoilers. There are four moments in the game that you can choose to do things. No, three moments in the game where you can choose to do things that will give you different choices in one of the two ending branches of the game. Okay. Um, other than that it seems kind of arbitrary. Like, you remember in the it, when we did the dojo, you fucked up the kids, right? Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know if How anybody ever forget? mentions that ever again. But, like... <laughs> That's probably a black mark on your record, on your psych profile. The thing is, what are they going to do? Are they going to say, well, I guess you can't go to the CIA because you terrorized those yeah. kids. Game's over, I guess. Yeah, you put possums in their butts. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
There are a few sequences in one part of the game that they showed off in, in E3 videos where you actually have some running between cover and shooting at people. But once again, it's all very scripted and it's all very much in a specific arena. Yeah. And there's usually only one way to solve the issue at hand. Right. Um, there's a lot of dialogue options where when people are talking to you, you can choose whether you want to be a bitch or not a bitch or like make out type of thing. Those are usually <laughs> your... Or bitch, not a bitch, kiss them. Right. Um, those didn't, I mean, you know, it didn't really seem like I was off at a, a wildly different part of the story, depending on whether I was a bitch or not a bitch or make out. Um, it seemed like th- that really didn't, didn't hang. It, it, like, I don't know. The choices in the game just felt very arbitrary. That's, that's actually the next Quantic Dream game. Arbitrary choices? No. Bitch, not a bitch or make out. Bitch, not a bitch or make out. I thought that was a new ABC game show, right? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, not a bitch or make out. Um, the game also goes into some weird directions. Like, there's a kind of there's a good story to be had there about like, okay, you've got this girl, and she's got these psychic, or this woman, she's got these psychic powers or psychic ghost buddy or whatever. Like, we want to make her into a weapon, and like, what are the, you know, she can't have a normal life, and we've got some drama around like, oh, I want a normal life, oh, you can't have a normal life, any of that stuff. But then there's this whole other part of the story about other entities terrorizing people, and the government wants to build a big ghost reactor and. <laughs> What are the implications yeah. of that where you're just like... Like an ecto-containment unit? Sort of. Yeah, you remember the scene in Ghostbusters where Walter Peck turns off the containment unit? It's a big Twinkie. Yeah, there's, there's a couple parts in the game that are kind of like that. It was like... It's, it's, that, it's that point in the Quantic Dream games where everything kind of goes off the rails in a dumb direction. You're like, well, wait a minute. I didn't need any of this bullshit. Like, uh, I'm, I'm fighting off dark entities now that are trying to scratch up Jody and I don't... Why <laughs> is it the afterlife? Is it the ghost? Is it the phantom zone? What is all this bullshit? And why does the government even want to get in there with the ghosts? Like I know why Willem Dafoe wants to get in there. It's because he's fucking Willem Dafoe and he's crazy. But yeah, clearly you he's know, actually playing himself. Yeah, everybody else. I don't. I don't know. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna say some good things now. Okay, say about, good things about the game. Um, all the motion capture stuff is great. Yeah, uh, the faces they're. I feel like they're they're constantly getting ready to fall into the uncanny valley, yeah. but they're just walking right on the edge of it. It's enough so that you get some honest to god emotion coming out of the characters with the motion capture and stuff like that. Um, the uh, the overall graphics in the game are real nice, and because it takes place over a bunch of different years, they do trot around to a lot of different locations and they show you a lot of different stuff. Although, because Quantic Dream is the developer, you get the impression that like um, that. You're looking at like a, a, what's supposed to be an American apartment, but it's actually like what a European thinks an American apartment looks like. So everything's slightly <laughs> weird or off. Like at one point, Jody ordered a pizza, and the box that the pizza came in was a little bit too small for an American pizza. And I was, I was wondering like, about that. I was yeah. like, "What's going on? What is this? Some sort of transforming pizza? Yeah. <laughs> it like unfolds this as you like open the, the box, like the Back to the Future Two pizza. Where you <laughs> yeah, put it in the rehydrator." Um, so there's some of that stuff. There's some parts of the game that go on a little bit too long. There's one sequence where you're homeless that, oh, my God, it just goes on for quite a while. There are some of these flashback parts where basically you flash back to watching a conversation between a few people for about five minutes, and then that chapter is over. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, I don't know. It's, it's a good, it's a decent game. It just it never managed to hook me. There's a lot of crying in it, too. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. I hope you like watching Ellen Page weep, because she fucking cries all the time in this game. It's actually one of my favorite things, Jeff. You go to watch ellenpageweep.com. Sometimes I call her from a payphone. Uh-huh. Cry for me, Ellen. You just Skype with her? Cry You catch her on me. chat roulette from time to time? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Jason. She's on there a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm usually just looking for dicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you but sometimes it's like Ellen Page. Yeah. Hey, hey Ellen Page. Are you looking yeah. for dicks too? She's like, yeah. <laughs> and then she starts crying. And she starts crying because you no know dicks. I interrupted her 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 dick watching. Um, as I've said before, I don't think that replayability should be a giant factor in whether you buy a game. In some cases, in this case, though, it's <sighs> like when you get done with this game, I don't really know. If there's any real good reason to go back and play it over again. Yeah. Like there's okay. There are at least from what I can tell. I picked one branch of the two endings and I wasn't willing to play through the last mission a second time. 
So the branch that I played, because of the way that I played, had four different endings. Um, so there's potentially five, maybe more different endings. Okay. The thing is that most of those you choose right at the end of the game, so you could just load it up yeah. and go back and do it again. Um, it's also... For games like this, the best uh, there is a great tool out there called YouTube. Tell me of the YouTube <laughs> where you can not go through the same shit all again. Ah, uh, Jason, I don't want to. I don't want to endorse the fucking the act of really I'm, I'm, looking up endings. I'm going to look up all of them when I get home. Uh, I'm going to uh, just, just do it. Yeah. I'm going to post them all on your page on Facebook. On my page on Facebook. Yeah. Why? Just because, just to okay. be a dick. All right, that's fine. I don't care. Um, yeah, I can't control. I can't control Jason Murphy. <laughs> just m- much as Jody I, doesn't I have control you. over Ida. <laughs> yeah, I'm him. <laughs> um, so yeah, the story is kind of compelling, but it tends to ramble on for a good twelve to thirteen hours. A lot of which is, you know, like I said, there's one mission that involves clean up your fucking dirty apartment, you skank. A dude is coming over, so <laughs> pick up the fucking empty... I mean, literally, pick up the empty fast food wrappers off the ground where you've left them and fucking take a shower, you pig, before that dude gets here. Just laying there in her own filth in a pile of Carl's you know, Jr. Mean, wrappers. Like, okay, it, it, it's kind of... Right here is the question about, do are you interested in Beyond Two Souls? Are you interested in playing a game where one of the missions is basically a person sitting in their bachelor pad or bachelorette pad surrounded by empty fast food wrappers and some dude is coming over and you've got to clean up real fast and make the place look all right so that, you know, maybe you can bang later. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so there's that. Uh, There's a lot of points in this game that could have been cut out if they just wanted to hit the high notes. Like, this could have been a six-hour game if they just wanted to kind of hit the high notes. Uh, but if you're into the storytelling where they make you walk and they make you turn stuff on and off and fucking do this shit, then cool. The actual action parts, actiony parts of the game are pretty cool, but once again, it kind of you kind of get bugged about the lack of agency that you have over exactly what the fuck is happening in right. the story. I I can't choose do I want to shoot that one guy or not shoot that one guy. Sometimes you can save people, sometimes you can sneak past them, but for the most part, you're on this one track and things always play out the same way. So Rails. <sighs> yeah. Hella hella rails. There's a bunch of unlockable extras. If you fly around with Iden and you find these things, you can unlock concept art and movies and making of videos and all that shit that really I swear to God, nobody cares about. You know what? You listening to this, you who is listening to this, if you care about that shit, I want to know who you yeah. are. Like your gallery or whatever. Right. Do Here's, you here, here are all the cards you collected with character art. Yeah. I I could give less of a shit about that. I don't know who does. Um yeah. So an exceptionally high production value game that was well put together, but just not terrifically engaging, um, especially for the long periods of walking around. Uh, I'm gonna give it a three, three out of five. Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not terrible, and it's not broken by any stretch of the imagination, but it just drags. Yeah. You know? so. Yeah. I'm wondering uh, if, uh, I mean, what what's uh, what are other critics saying? Are they saying pretty much the same thing, or are they saying like masterpiece or I whatever? Know, I don't look at. I wonder how at, sales are going. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. How I don't, do I get I in? How do I get stuff. in a little a little pet ghost? How do you get a pet ghost? Yeah. Well, if here if you go to, to go like do shit. If you go to BlizzCon, they give you one, right? Oh, really? <laughs> you get one for your Diablo three character. R- really? I don't know. <laughs> I play Diablo three. I'll do that. I have a pet warthog right now. This sounds way more fun. I think you have to murder a hobo, or maybe a hundred hobos. How uh, many hobos is, is enough hobos? I, I could do a hundred. You do a hundred? Let's just you know theoretically. Okay. If I were into murdering hobos, which yeah. I'm not. Really. Uh, I'm not, but a hundred is doable. Okay. On a good weekend. Well, let's turn this shit off. Let's go get started. Let's do it. It's over, Jody. It's over. I concentrate, Jody. Some things that I'm not proud of. Tell them to leave me the fuck alone, because next time...